So the no contact rule is the foundational and most widespread piece of breakup advice. Every blogger, every YouTuber recommends it these days and for good reasons. It is one of the most effective ways to heal and grow from a breakup and or get a decent shot at reattracting an ex. Yet, despite its glaring popularity, the no contact rule is also one of the most misunderstood pieces of breakup advice. So let me try and clear things up for you so you can leverage it appropriately and hopefully achieve your post breakup goals, whatever they are, more smoothly. So let's start and talk about what even is no contact. Now the theory goes that the no contact rule is this boundary building action that translates to emotionally and physically separating yourself from your ex by, as the name implies, cutting or limiting contact with them. Now, when you apply this rule, you essentially disrupt your typical patterns of interaction with them, oftentimes leading to improved self-esteem and reduced emotional dependence, as well as a higher likelihood for your ex to perceive you as more attractive. Now, no contact entails exactly what you think it does. From its initial application forward, you don't call, message, or engage with your ex's social media anymore. In fact, I would urge you unfriend and unfollow them. You also don't go to places where you would have an accidental encounter with them. You don't wish them happy birthday anymore, happy Valentine's, Easter, Thanksgiving, uh, whatever. You don't even express your condolences if they lose a family member or a friend. You also hide every reminder of them that is within your control. And you avoid going to places that elicit or can potentially elicit painful memories. Also important, cut out or distance yourself from mutual friends to process the breakup. And especially avoid drama-causing individuals and don't seek information about your ex through your friends or mutual friends. And if you're close with your ex's family, sure, notify them of your need for space, but don't feel obligated to elaborate and refrain from involving them in exchanging information about your ex. Also very important, retrieve your belongings. Of course, if your ex, you know, won't return something and it's of great sentimental or monetary value, pursue a legal route. On the flip side, however, return your ex's belongings. Either do it yourself in person, via mail, or best case scenario, ask a friend to bring all the items to your ex so you can minimize contact. Now, for jointly owned possessions, do an inventory and fairly divide everything based on value or attachment, and of course, consider legal assistance if needed. Now, sometimes the classic no contact rule is impossible to apply. Maybe you have kids or pets with your ex, maybe you live or work together, or maybe you share some other responsibilities that force you to stay in touch. In these cases, you need to resort to what's called the modified no contact rule. Now, the difference between the modified and the classic is that in modified, you are quote unquote allowed to contact your ex and communicate if it's important, like when you need to discuss who will look after your kid or the dog for the weekend, or when there is some living arrangement that needs to be settled, or when you need to go over some work-related or financial matter. Now, despite being able to communicate with your ex, this communication does need to be brief, straight to the point, and only focused on the pressing challenge or challenges, and you need to end it as soon as you come to some mutual agreement, some mutually favorable agreement, or decision, or even solution. Now, the next obvious question is, how long should the no contact rule last for? Well, this rule should be a permanent thing, in my opinion. It should be the equivalent of walking away and never looking back after breaking up. Now, this is 
pretty self-explanatory if you just want to move on from an ex. Of course you don't want to resume communication anytime soon, but where things get murky, however, is when it comes to people who want solely to get back with their ex, who want to save their relationship. Now, interestingly, I've seen a lot of ex-back coaches and experts advocating for making the no-contact period between 30 and 60 days. These people even encourage their, I guess, followers to reach out to their ex after a certain number of days, usually with some pre-prepared text message, some, I guess, template. This shit never made sense to me. Completely, I'll be completely honest with you. Like, doing time-limited no-contact only incentivizes you to passively wait for this X day period to pass. Therefore, your intentions and efforts are no longer set on healing and personal growth, but largely on forceful reconciliation. And that never works out. That's not the point of no contact even. It's also really needy and therefore unattractive. It implies you perceive yourself as less worthy than your ex. It shows them that you see them on a pedestal. It shows that you are willing to go out of your way to accommodate and fight for someone who clearly doesn't appreciate it or who doesn't really want you around. And that only conveys that you have little to no self-respect and that you have nothing better going on in your life. Now, bottom line, my theory is that all forms of X day, no contact, so time limited, no contact, or another word for it would be active, no contact. They are just another marketing ploy. People just don't want to hear how their ex should actually show willingness to mend their relationship by reaching out first before they ever give them another chance. Of course not. They want to hear what feels good. And since this feel good bullshit sells more eggs back products than the harsh truth, you know, make no contact a permanent thing, most people working in this slimy industry swear by it. So that's my two cents on the length of no contact. Now let's talk about, okay, how can you actually apply no contact, both for when you want to move on and for when you want to actually rekindle your relationship when you want to get back together with your ex. So when you want to move on, just don't think about it and just go no contact. That's how you apply it. If you want, you can also communicate to your ex. You can also tell them that you'll be distancing yourself for a certain undefined period so you can heal faster and that you would appreciate uh, if they don't reach out for the time being. At least not if it's not urgent. Now make your notifying message when you tell them this short, to the point and respectful. At best, do it through text as well. And also, be sure this message is devoid of any dramatic declarations of your feelings. And if your ex replies, don't be too eager to respond. Most of the time, you don't have to. Plus, if you do reply, you can very quickly drag yourself back into the discussion, into some sort of a discussion, and with it, undermine your credibility and... As a result, because you're undermining your credibility, because you're essentially breaking no contact, you also prolong your healing. Now let's talk about how you can apply no contact if you want to get back together with your ex. Now this is really important. After you break up, but still before you actually apply the no contact rule, you should clearly tell your ex that you want them back. Now, whether you reach out through social media, text messages, a phone call in real life, that's irrelevant. It also doesn't matter when your breakup happened or who's the dumpy and who is the dumper. Or even whether your ex is indifferent at the moment or completely upset with you. The point is that if after you state your interest, after you tell your ex that you want them back, they are receptive or they imply that they do want to get back together with you, you need to invite them on a date 
and that's how you start mending your relationship. And in this case, no contact is actually not needed. However, if your ex is cold and receptive or mean or vicious, after you state your interest, after you tell them how you want them back, or they've even blocked, ghosted, ignored, or rejected you, you have to end the conversation and start slash continue with no contact. Now, do note, I have an entirely separate guide on how to get an ex back that I will link right now on the screen. So if you want to go and watch that, go and click that link. With that being said, let's move on to our next topic relating to no contact. What to do when your ex reaches out when you're in no contact. Now, some people spend way too much time obsessing about this, and a lot of breakup advice out there pretty much overcomplicates this essentially very simple issue. Now, here is how I would approach it. Like before, first, I will talk about how to approach it when you just want to move on from an ex, and then I'll talk about how you want to approach the whole thing when you want to get back together with your ex. Now, if you decide you don't want your ex back anymore, after being in no contact, yet they reach out, I would just say something like, hey ex, I'm still healing from our breakup, it would mean a lot if you wouldn't contact me at this time. That being said, don't feel like you have to shy away from other options. You can tell your ex to fuck off, which I don't recommend, but if you're an asshole like me, sure, do it. You can also block them, you can ghost them when they reach out, or you can engage with them in like a short text conversation or let's say a five minute phone call and then just say you have to go. On the other hand, how do you respond when you want to get back together with them? I already alluded to this a bit earlier, but if your ex reached out, first of all, what we need to get straight is that if they reached out about something personal, something not tied to logistics like kids, pets, living arrangements, work-related matters, right? It means that they still have feelings for you, even if their contact is kind of unrelated to the breakup or getting back together. The fact that they reached out, it's a huge indicator of attraction. And at that point, all you need to do is engage in a short, text conversation or like a five minute phone call as I usually recommend and then as soon as reasonable invite them on a date. But anyway, moving on, just a couple of final thoughts on the no contact rule. For those who want to move on, just don't overcomplicate the whole thing. Keep it stupid simple. Eliminate your ex from your life or distance yourself from them as much as possible and then decide not to return, and then keep remaking the decision in each and every moment, especially in moments of weakness, all until you've moved on and accepted your new life. Now, for those who want to get their eggs back, here's a couple of final thoughts. Don't commit to no contact to win them back, to get them back. Commit to no contact to win slash get yourself back because that's what the no contact rule is really for. That's what it was actually always for. Raising your ex's attraction, getting back together because of it. That's just one of the many beautiful sexy side effects of no contact. But it's not the main thing. It's not the point. And above all, know that no contact is just not enough. It's just not the only tool you need, whether you want to recover from your breakup, move on, or get back together with an ex, right? To hit any and all of your post-breakup goals, there has to be more on the table than just no contact. You must couple it with genuine self-examination and self-improvement. That and probably some form of professional help as well. That goes a long way also. That's it for the video. If you want to go deeper into my process for breakup recovery or into my process for reattractions, down below this video are two links to two of my very popular cheat sheets. Be sure to download them. With that being said though, 
I will see you guys and gals later.